A little fire you leave today can leave you without a little tomorrow. Out of school children in Lagos. Fatima was my neighbor in Anthony Village. The father was a security guard in the neighborhood. But he was one of those privileged ones who had entire houses literally left in their care because of some unresolved inheritance dispute among the family members of the late owner. I arrived from work early one day and was trying to park when I noticed some kids in school uniforms throwing cudgels to pluck fruit from the tree in the premises. So I had to engage them on the dangers of what they were doing. And I gave them a long stick. So she said her name was Fatima. She was 13, a beautiful and sharp Fulani girl. The intellect struck me, and I thank God that she was in Lagos and not in some other part where she might have been married out at her age. However, maybe I thank God too early. I did not get to see Fatima around for a few months, and the next time I saw her, she was pregnant. Her manner of dressing has changed, and my neighbor, who lived in the north for years, said the change was because she was now married. I was sad. Another brilliant girl's dream of education has been cut short, and she has been made to become a woman and a housewife at 13. I used to think that these things only happen up there. Alas, I was wrong. And right in this state of excellence, these things are happening. Let me lay on this other experience before taking things home. My office used to be right at the junction of Adela Odeku and Akiandeshala on Victoria Island. By the time I arrived in the morning, there were usually some children at that junction who would have resumed before me. They are beggars, and they beg all through the day. In the evenings when I'm going home, they are still there begging. The age range of this are from babies to teenagers. Some of the teenagers are the mothers of the babies. If you go a few meters from that junction to San Josefa Funwa Akiandeshola Junction, there is yet another set of begging children. I got a house speaking friend of mine to speak with them. And here are some of the feedback from that engagement. Some were from Bono, obviously some displacement. Others were from other parts of the north. Some had attended school at some point before relocating to Lagos, while some have never been to school. They have a community and there is a leader, all sort of stories there. Effectively, the menace of out-of-school children may not really be just about the northern state. It is also here in Lagos. When children grow up on the streets like these ones on VI and other locations, with no education and no skills, what will they become in the future? How useful will they be to the society? I wish to advocate that Lagos State take a shot at doing something effective about this subject of children growing up on the street with no education or skills, begging from morning till night, a society that allows this to happen to children is digging a grave of insecurity for itself in some years ahead. The time for specific actions is now. Um, I recently shared a, shared a video on my wall, my Facebook and Instagram, and even on Twitter, where Makoko. Makoko. Yes, I where, saw it. Where school, Lagos State government is shouting, schools must reopen, provide face masks and sanitizers and all was not for the children. And when I saw that video, I was like, this is Lagos. Mm. Hmm. The real Lagos. This is the real Lagos. Lagos state government is not saying this. They are the ones saying hand sanitizers and no uniform, no government face masks. Even the environment these people are living in. And so this same thing is replicated in other areas like um, uh, Jorabadia, um, Bariga, Bariga yes. Alakuko, and all of those areas. So, and yet, like we have all said here, a leader will come, campaign to change these things, get there, and then all your first concern about is how to buy property abroad, and then how to go take your own dose recoup, of, recoup. Um, and then recoup political investment. Gradually, why do you think today 
we'll talk about the good old days. Oh, when we were going to school, mm -hmm. it wasn't like this. But because a lot of people also were neglected at that time, and so those people that were neglected at that time are now today the ones that we're afraid of. And the numbers we are neglecting now, it's mm. more. It might be very convenient for some of us to send our children abroad. But a time will come, they will still need to come back home. No place like home. And will there be a safe place for them? So that's why we all, I, I, I quickly, sorry, that's why I subscribe to um, Seydou's um, advocacy and ideologies and philosophy. We must all now decide, not wait for answers, mm. decide that we must collectively rise up to begin to, those of us that can confront them, confront them because when it starts, no be only them, it will affect, it will affect all of us. True. For me, I want to, I think I remember during the administration of Governor Fashola, or was it Governor Tinubu back then, um, beggars were taking all the streets of Lagos. Fashola. Fashola. I think it was Fashola. The thing about the going back and forth with our policies is what irks me here. At some point, Lagos did the right thing to read the streets of beggars mm -hmm. and to ensure. Just relocated them. Even if it was a relocation. Yeah. Even if it was Which a caused an opera. An opera, yes. But let me, let me also recall that once upon a time, there was free education in Western Nigeria. Mm. So whether you were a beggar or you were not, you, you had access have, to free education. It's no longer feasible. So now. Politicians of nowadays say it's not feasible. Mm -hmm. So what then is it? We've talked about, Jumoke has talked about health. Yeah. We've now talked education. about people roaming. Talk about know. crime. We've talked about crime. If you can't tackle health, you can't tackle shelter, as you yes. mentioned the other time. Can't you can't tackle, tackle education. education. You can't tackle security. So what can you tackle? Excuse mm -hmm. me, sir, and ma. What, what are, exactly what, are you tackling? No, if you can't tackle all of this, what you are... Where the government they do say what you are breeding is insecurity yes, and sir. criminality. Um, she, she can, uh, what what uh, Bola will just say that this is a time a ticking time, time bomb. bomb because um, and it's a very complicated one because this people that you're describing here they're the outcome of you know um, uh, a culture that believes that children are a gift from God. Mm. So, procreation is just, you can have as many as God That's gives to you and Don't the world plan for them. will take God care will of take it. Care of them. Mm. You understand? And that ideology still remains with certain people wow. who would not see the big picture. Now, that becomes a problem for us because these people eventually will become the tools that the politicians and would use because they would become, they are no economic value, yeah. no, they are, they are, they've not been nurtured. Yeah. No value system, and they eventually become that. The in in engineering we call them the slowest. They are the the ones dragging us behind. Unfortunately, the link. they are a very huge a number. Huge number. That's, that's so true. it's it's a time bomb that needs to be looked into. Lagos State. I, uh, the other day I, I saw uh, a documentary uh, from Plus TV here on this issue, and the commissioner did mention that. They are addressing it. And I understand that this is an issue that cannot be taken away. You will take them away. You understand? You will come back. You will take them away. And there's a law in Lagos State that's, that criminal, uh, criminalizes, criminalizes begging. So, but they can't. How many of them would they put in, in jail. prison? So you'll take them, take them to the centers. And once you've been taken three, four times, then you're, you're taking through, uh -huh, you know, through process. So it's a difficult, it's again dealing with the problem, you need to go back to the course. How yeah. do we deal with this army of people? Okay, so the, um, they, they call it, in economics, there's the, I'm looking for that economic word. Tell of, just tell <laughs> the true value. <laughs> Opportunity cost, that's the okay. phrase yeah. that I'm looking for, of sending your children to school if you're a poor farmer or fisherman. Because the more of them you have, the more hands you have to help you in your farm or in fishing. Mm -hmm. So even if the education was totally free, and unless and nineteenth century, yes, yeah. unless and until they are feeding them, which is why the feeding program works. Mm -hmm. At least, 
Yeah, uh, well, in Oshu State, he did. In the first oh, really? tenor. <laughs> in the first <laughs> tenor of my really? Second I don't know. Uh, but first tenor, I was uh, there. I saw it work. No, the one they showed you <laughs> as a press person. Because no, because Not if you cannot have one, there was there was a story of a mother who went to school to say, Oh, my child is sick. She can't come to school, but I came to collect her egg. <laughs> because you can't feed your child egg. Right. The government is giving them egg. So that's why the feeding, you know, thing worked, you know, for, for a while until government again said they couldn't continue with it. It's a back and forth with policy. It, uh, well, if you have spent so much money, see, yeah, I, I talk about restructuring, I talk about us changing our I don't imagine restructuring with that kind of a government. <laughs> <laughs> I, I talk about cost of governance. And unstructuring. <laughs> Because if, unless and until it becomes um, unattractive, when a governor starts to be paid um, like a civil servant and you cannot touch the government coffers, where only people who truly have the heart of service are going into governance, uh -huh. will they prioritize health? Because you know that when you come out of government, you're also going to face the health system. Will they prioritize education? Because maybe then we have laws that enforce it, Let's that your own children. Yes, we yes, have to push continue them. Continue to push. That's why yes. we're all advocating today, okay. I suppose. Um, a nation that does not take the future of our children seriously will end up breeding fraudsters and grabbers and kidnappers, militants, armed bandits, as youth leaders and heroes and leaders. Well, time is never our friend on this program. However, the advocacy continues on our social media platforms, on Facebook, Plus TV Africa, hashtag the Advocate NG, or on Twitter and Instagram, at Plus TV Africa, hashtag the Advocate NG. To catch up with previous broadcasts, go to plustvafrica.com slash the Advocate NG. Don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel, Plus TV Africa. Till next week, same time on this station, let's keep advocating for a better society. Bye. Happy New Year, Sid. <laughs> <laughs> five panelists, five topical issues, no holds barred. For me, it's not knowledge that's lacking. It's that greed. It's that mentality where you feel you deserve to take your own and take it infinitely and let everybody else just manage however they will manage. We're almost becoming hardwired to try and cheat. I would, you know, suggest that we begin to hold our leaders accountable. There was a time in this country when yes. things actually work. I don't think that any organization should be above the law. And I think one of the challenges we have in this country is about governance across the board. Well, well, what I'm saying is that it doesn't really affect us in Nigeria. I don't know what we can do if the system is already corrupted. We've been warned as a continent of the influx of the Chinese. If you don't repay your debt, they will just colonize you.